Darius here. Uh, he puts out videos. Is that uh, How an do you effort? know Darius? I know Darius. <laughs> I, wa I, watch, I watch his videos. I watch. Recent people CEO. Yes, sir. Darius Sanders in the building. Recent people media. This is Darius Sanders. He's one of the, the people that keeps us popping and keeps our brand out there. Now. Podcast. We got a special guest in the building, Yukari Walker. You've been on the side. Yeah. Now you finally get to tell your story, bro. How you feeling, bro? Sure, I feel good. Feel good to be above. Feel good to be a part of this team. Just good to be here. Yeah, so you came in with a group of guys. Tell them what position you played, what school you came from. Uh, I play center. Center all all my college football. I came from a UConn. Very basketball school. I just went there to make a name for myself to get, get here at an even bigger school. I definitely know UConn from basketball. <laughs> That's like the... March Madness, like that's that's when they thrive. That's when they start, you know what I'm saying, be lit. You went there for football. How was playing football for UConn? Uh, was that your first choice out of high school? No, nah, I had offers from Big uh, Big 12 schools like Kansas. Um, well, that was my own Big, Big 12, Kansas, New Mexico State, uh, Toledo, Air Force. I had a whole bunch of them. I just went to UConn because I feel like it, I can get on the field there like ASAP. Going from Texas to Yukon, that's kind of crazy. I might be naive, but what? It, where is Yukon? In the middle of nowhere. Now, what it, state is it in? It's in Connecticut. So Connecticut. I'm sorry, y'all. Don't get mad at me. What is Connecticut like, bro? Because we talk about Colorado being so different from Texas, which is where you're from, correct? Yeah. But how was Yukon? How was Connecticut different from Texas? Bro, Yukon, Yukon in Texas is just... Yukon is like you and you you on the island by yourself with a lot of trees, <laughs> trees and snow, and it's cold. It's like a rainy day every day out there. But Texas, you got everything. You got food close to you, crib, and everything. Walmart, but color I said uh, Connecticut. You got to travel like thirty minutes to get some food or something. Yeah, okay. It's just crazy. So where 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 Yukon was is kind of like in the country, you could say. Or no, it's, it's a like city, but a, it's just kind of far from. Yeah, stuff. yeah, it's far from the city, but it's it's like in a wild, in the middle of nowhere with <laughs> a lot of trees. Wild is crazy. Yes. So when you first got there, coming from Texas, was there any culture shock that you had to deal with being in that new environment? Uh, not not really, because the coaching staff was real. It, the coaching staff was real cool there, and it felt like, not like high school, but I feel like I can bond with that coaching staff. It was they was a good good staff. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go to high school at? DeSoto, Texas. DeSoto, Texas. You played with, uh, well, some other people that y'all probably know that went there. Josh Johns, who's on the staff, he played there. Um, Jay Mill played there. Mm -hmm. How was playing at DeSoto, which is um, a prolific high school in, 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 in Texas, the U, that produces a lot of high, you know, high caliber football players? How was that experience for you? Bro, it, it, it was amazing. It was, it was like getting me prepared for this, where I'm at now. Cause going there, I, I grew up watching Lavisca Chenault. He played for uh, Colorado. Katie Nixon, Colorado also, and my boy Josh, who which on the staff now, it's like getting me ready for where I'm at now. But it was amazing playing for that football team. Shout what out to you, Coach Mathis. Shout out to Coach Mathis. What do you think makes schools like that so different? Like the IMGs, the DeSotos, the schools that are looked at as football powerhouses because you were in that type of program. What are some of the things that they instilled, or what did your life look like in high school? You know what I'm saying? It's like that. It's like it's a lot of hymns. Your hymns on that team. It's hymns everywhere on that team. Like you're him to play for DeSoto. You're him. Oh, in every position. Yes, the Dunkerville IMG. I don't know about Cedar Hill. Sorry, Bucky. <laughs> but See, we might have to start a little. You know what I'm saying? Battle of the belt line, a little. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's it's a lot of good good players on that team, those teams to make you feel like, dang, we really cold. Like, we like that. Like, they just won two back-to-back -back state championships. They did. What are some of your favorite memories playing football as an early kid uh, that 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 maybe you didn't even know or maybe someone was told you, hey, you're, you're going to be special at this game. You're going to be able to play at the next level. Oh, really? My pops, he, when I got into football, he put me at running back. This, this why I look. This why I look like the way I look now. Cause I played running back until I was probably fourteen. Had good feet, fast. It was just pops just told me you like you gonna have good feet and you gonna be quick. Start putting on weight. I put my hand in the dirt out. Told my coach I said I don't want to play football no more. Cause I didn't want to be no lineman. Yeah. I want to hold the ball. 
But going going back and looking at looking at the running back and stuff, I'm like, dang, this footwork that I just did when I was younger helped me now in the trenches, getting around on people, reaching them is like crazy. So the, you didn't know that <laughs> what they were trying to do to you actually kind of helped you. It gave you an advantage. You yep. feel me? Yep. To what you're doing now. And if you hadn't been set on that track, you might not have, you know what I'm saying, that type of it factor that you have now. Yeah. So coming from high school, you said you had a lot of different offers. Um, you said your dad was a big part of even getting you started in football. What's your relationship like with your, with your parents? Uh, we're real close. Me and my mom and my pops, we're real close. Um, you know, it's just a call. They a call away. They come up here anytime for me. We're real close. Uh, shoot, we just close. Yeah. There's nothing you can explain about it, how close your pops is are, pops and moms are. That's a big part of my life right there. What, did they want you to go anywhere else besides where you, UConn, where you went first? Uh, Were they nah. kind of surprised? Nah, I, I really chose this on my own. I chose it on my own. They weren't really tripping about it. My, my pops just said, wherever you go, don't come back the next semester because <laughs> he don't want me filling out a class or anything. So I stuck to that. Now I'm working on my degree. So, oh, first off, yeah, what, what degree are you working toward right now? Uh, ethnic studies right now. Ethnic studies. Yep. What do you want to do w- with that? Or that's just a point of interest right now. It's a really a point of interest, but I really want to like talk about things going on in different cities, like how to help homeless get more housing, transportation, and just how to like clean up the streets. So that kind of <coughs> goes into your aspirations outside of football. What are some of the things that? How would you describe yourself without using any any adju- any anything to do with football? Like, what are your what are your interests in, and what were you passionate about before the football? Or outside of that? Professional fisherman. Professional fisherman. That's That was my number one growing up. Me and my dad always used to go fishing. I would turn on the TV, fishing TV shows early in the morning and sit there and watch them. But if football doesn't work out, I'll probably end up becoming a coach at the at DeSoto. That that would probably be the main thing. Okay. So giving back to the people that, you know, poured into you and, yep. and bringing your knowledge back onto the scene. I like it. Bro's going to do big things. I just wanted to touch on that just so I can know. Getting to UConn, I know you've said it before, mm-hmm. but can you tell the people <laughs> how was your first season playing um, football oh my God. in college? Man, my first season uh, was my first game. I think my first game was Michigan, at Michigan. Uh, I was at center. And, you know, Michigan got those dudes. I was at center. It was, it was getting loud in there. It was just a crazy. It was a hell of an experience, but it was a crazy game. First game for me. I just had to adjust. Shoot, we rocked out, and uh, we also had two twins from Desoto that played okay. against Michigan. But it was it was a hell of an experience. It was a nice nice experience too. Was that one of the moments where you said, "Okay, I'm here. Yeah, I'm playing college football right now." Yeah, I stepped on that field. I looked around. I was like, "I'm on. I'm on TV." I'm really going to accomplish my dream. Was that kind of, did that have you in awe at first? Knowing your first experience as a college football player, it was everything that you had seen from the outside. You had the lights, the cameras, the action, everything. Yeah. It wasn't lacking anything. Yeah, this is like, I was watching them grow, uh, growing up, watching Johnny Menzel. It was like, wow, what is this? I'm actually on that same field. He's yeah. on, like, it's just crazy. So UConn, the season, how did y'all season go last year or when you were there? Oh, uh, it wasn't. It was a bad season. I'm going to keep it a buck. It, was, it wasn't it as a football standard. It was, uh, I think, 1-12. One 1-12. In one in that was my first year first year at UConn. And then, Sounds like our old record, 1-11, bro. I think my second year went to a bowl game. That was actually good. Shout out Zion, the quarterback. Uh, third year. Three, three and something. Three and something. Yeah, it's three and something. But we off that now. It's buff time now. The funny part, you said we off that, but you you've been off that. Not that you weren't focused. What when, when is the earliest that Colorado and what Colorado had going on got on your radar? <laughs> yeah, like you know what I'm saying. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And I can tell you the exact story. Um, okay. What game was that? Um, Do you say CSU or was it before? 
CSU. Yeah, CSU game. Um, I we had just played. I forgot what who we played. We had just played. It's like eleven in Connecticut. Come home, turning on Colorado, staying up all night to watch that game. <laughs> And then the next day, I'm watching Bucky videos. I'm going to be like, eh, I want to go to school. But I don't want to leave the starting spot at uh, UConn. So I'm just like, eh, I'm just praying about it, seeing what's going on. Hit up my pops, telling him I wanted to transfer. So you hit him up, tell him you want to transfer. Um, but I want to backtrack a little bit. So you're watching the game. You're watching Bucky's videos. How did those come across your radar, bro? Like, obviously, I it's kind of like, we know the reach that we have, but we don't really know the reach that we have until you meet somebody that says, hey, like, I've been watching the videos for X amount of time. Like, how, how what's the first time you came across it? You saw it on Instagram, like, Tick- or you was on YouTube? TikTok, bro. TikTok popped up. Let me guess. It was the it was the Coach Brew video where he was, uh, was it the first team meeting where uh, where uh, Coach Brew was like, stand tall? That one, that, I remember that one on TikTok went, went viral. Or was it, what was, what was the video you seen? No, nah, I think it was... I don't know which practice it was, but y'all was just in the cafeteria chilling. And uh, I think Shador had his phone and Coach Prime was like, go put that up. It was some random video I just came across. Then I started click follow. Then I seen they had a YouTube channel. Click subscribe. Hey, he's a real he's a real supporter, bro. Now that's 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 one of our brothers. I just wanted to touch on that because um, it just shows you how small the world really is. bro. Yep. And that the videos actually contributed to help being a recruiting tool Mm -hmm. would you say seeing those seeing like an intimate view of the program before you came here did that influence you in any way or did that deter you did you see some stuff in the videos that you were like i don't know about that i'm gonna have to check it out when i get there or did you see some stuff that you're like i actually i'm looking forward to that when i get there Nah, i'm looking forward yeah that's what i seen like i'm looking forward to being there going there it's like it's like I'm watching those videos and I'm like, I belong there with them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the staff now at Colorado is just like mine's at high school. That's that's why it makes it feel like home. It's like I, I love it here. So, you saying you watching the videos and you getting a positive input? Have 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 you been able to the people that you've interact with were they the same that were they the same that when you saw them on the screen like okay, Coach Prime you see him in the YouTube video. Then actually meeting him. Yeah. Are they the same person? Yeah. Yeah, Coach Prime, yeah, he the same person every day. He tell me what's up, how I'm doing every day, and he don't change. He the same person. Uh, I think who has changed on camera, Trav. Travis. I never see him around. Every time the camera get on, I just don't see him talk like he used to. I guess he needs to be in his, in, in his element. He has been... I feel like Trav right now, Trav's just been focused on, on on working out. But I can say in agreement with you that once he does get in that mode, then it comes out a little bit more. You feel yeah. me? I think right now he's trying to avoid what a lot of people are kind of getting tired of, mm-hmm. which is the talk before the work. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, yeah, Because that's something I hear from y'all. Mm-hmm. Even y'all came in and the people may say they've had a big impact. They're all over the videos. They're not doing that by choice. We're gravitating toward them because we hung out with these dudes. I remember Shador, he invited me to a dinner where I got to meet all of y'all. Yeah. And immediately, it was night and day. I was like, bro, dog, these dudes are cool, bro. Mm-hmm. And and I want to applaud y'all for being so open and, and really just embracing being here. All of y'all seem actually happy to be here. Yeah. Like y'all are here because y'all want to be here. Talk about your relationship with Shador. How did that form and how, how has it progressed? Uh, me and Shador, we just, well, we actually been knowing, like, I ain't gonna say knowing, but we've been hanging, not hanging, we played against each other in high school when mm-hmm. he was at Trinity Christian. That was when I met him. And she, I remember, I remember him saying, they need linemen in high school, so I DM him on Twitter. Yeah. He was like, you trying to slide? I was like, nah, I'm just stay here. So I think just being coming here and then playing with him in high school is just like it's already been a connection. It's, it's like, fam, we finna do this. We finna go win the championship, and I don't need to, I don't need to like get on his level because we already had that connection. Yeah, and it, it's just crazy like how we, how I got here and we automatically bonded like ASAP. Mm-hmm. Us and the rest of the linemen. 
What talk about the rest of the lineman? So I'm I'm referring to Justin, Big Khalil, and um, Jordan Seaton, and even Tyler. Like talk about those guys that I always see you with day in and day out working out. There's not a time I don't see y'all joking and laughing, bro. Uh, those, That's a beautiful thing. Those guys is like is like brothers, brothers from another mother, literally. It's because like we we just hang with each other every day, every night. We in a group chat together. FaceTime, game, anything. Go get food together. You never see us without each other unless we're doing our own thing. I never, yeah, usually I, I won't just see. I might see I might see Jordan on his own, but it's just I feel like because he's a younger guy, but like a couple of the older guys like you and Justin, y'all usually be, you know what I'm saying, even Khalil, mm-hmm. y'all be at least with one other person and y'all just be chilling. Every day at lunch is just sit down, same table, just chop it up. Not really anything serious, but the act of being around each other, do you think that will play a big part? Or does that even matter about a team? Let's say you're you're cool with them, but spending that time together, how does that help? Because people say it does, but how do you think it actually helps? Now, we, we all spend time with uh, Shador, so I think it, it builds the trust. That's really the number one of the team, trust and um, and connections. The trust and connection is the number, both number ones for the team because you got to have trust and you got to have a connection. You got to believe in my left guard that if I don't know it, he knows it. And if he don't know it, I know it. Mm-hmm. You got to have that trust. So that's why we just hang out with each other every day. How have you adjusted to your position on the team? Because you you said it before in high school. I don't want to – no, you said it about college. I didn't want to leave my starting spot. Mm-hmm. So that – that obviously is your standard and your goal yeah. and non-negotiable here. You came here to start. You want to start. You want to be dominant. Mm. And you want to win. Yeah. How have you navigated uh, that dynamic with your fellow teammates? Because it, sometimes, you know, how we always listen to that song, Walking Your Trap, Take Over Your Trap. It can yeah. seem like a hostile takeover. Mm-hmm. How do you still remain relatable to those guys that, you know, you may be wanting to play over them? So we we basically just keep it real. We we help each other. Like Hank helped me mm-hmm. and I help I help him. It's like we're gonna do this. We're not I'm not going against you. We're trying to make each other better. Mm-hmm. We trying to make the team better. We trying to do what's right with the team. And it's like I did I did come here to start, but I'm still helping that person. Yeah. I'm not just like, nah, I'm not finna give you no help and not let you fail. No, nah, that's not how high I am. I'm finna help you. Yeah. Uh, I'm only asking that because they've seen snippets of, like, the one-on-ones from yeah. Well Off Media. Can you talk about <laughs> those moments? Because I like those moments because that is when it gets heated mm-hmm. in, in a controlled way. Yeah. That is when it gets heated. That is when it's like, nah, we're not friends, bro. I'm better than you. Mm-hmm. You can't with me. Nah, it's it been, it been some moments like that. We, all, them, all the one-on-ones like that, it's like, nah, we finna line this up. We want the ones out right now. We don't care who we want. We want the ones. It's like, hey, first five, go. And they already know what's up. Yeah. But one-on-ones have been hectic, though, with no pass. Just wait till we put them pass on, though. Can you give a shout-out to any of the returning guys that you see from your view? I like this guy. He's solid. Uh, I'm going to start defense. Either one. Defense, I'm going to go. On. Uh... Mari, Mari lined up in that wide, wide technique, and he know what I'm talking about. If you watch this and do a little swim move, I like Mari, Chadozi. Uh, who else? Been giving me, giving my eye. And uh, Shane, but O line, Khalil, Justin, me, Tyler Brown, Jordan Seaton, Tyler Johnson, all the O line. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I, I like how you're able to off rip. I'm not here to play. I'm here to take your job, but I rock with you though. Yeah, facts. That's, that's, that's exactly how it is. That that that's beautiful because that means at the at the heart of it, you are a teammate, bro. Yeah. Because I don't want it to seem as though these dudes came in here to be on some I'm better than you. You couldn't get it done, so I'm here now. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't portray that aura, energy, or image at all. Ever. Yeah. But like you said, 
you did come here with the goal in mind to play, to start, to dominate, and to win. And I know that since you're focusing on that, that's what's going to happen individually and collectively. Facts. That competitive mindset, though, um, how was the competition at a at at a UConn at, at UConn? Was was it this type of environment where where it's a uh, it's embraced? Because a lot of players have said from their other programs, you know, maybe their type of celebrations or what they do to get in that vibe of like mm-hmm. I'm him. I'm I'm finna turn up today in practice. It was kind of looked down on, like, hey, bro, come on, just chill. Yeah. How how was your experience? Competing at UConn and and competing here so far, uh, I say at UConn it wasn't, it wasn't turnt like how I'm used to. Like it wasn't, it wasn't. Paint a picture for them what turnt means. Even if you have to go back to like the Soto days, how yeah. how would the vibe of practice be like? What what was some of the I things? say it wasn't like, it wasn't a lot of energy at practice. Like some days would be all uh, we don't want to practice, want to go home tired. It just wasn't a lit vibe for practice. As in football, you're supposed to have that energy every day. But you come here, we ready to go out, do one-on-ones, go against the defenses, like lit, the music's going, strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, cool. they turned up. They're going to be the most turned. It's just they they getting us right. But at UConn, it was like, okay, I'm coming to play football, and then I'm bored at practice. Mm-hmm. You weren't engaged. Yeah, bored at practice. I'm like, what am I doing here? Do you feel like along the way you kind of lost that fun aspect of it? Not going. And, and you jumped into it and really embraced the job of it? Yeah, not going to lie. My first year there, when we went 1-12, and 12, I was like, this is not football. Because I'm fresh out of high school, a winning program. I'm coming here. I'm like, nah, this is not it. I don't, I'm not rocking with this. So I just prayed to God and waited my time, my turn, and turned up on the field. And got in the portal. So how do you deal with that environment? How do you still compete when the results are definitely against you? You're talking about one and twelve, one and eleven. Like that's that's what that's what we came from as well. Yeah. Colorado came from. How do you still want to win? How do you still keep that fire to even show up? You're saying some days the vibe is I don't want to practice. What's the point? But it's- how do you still keep that? Because I feel like when you do slack, you you don't you don't show up when your opportunity presents itself. But yeah. you showed up when your opportunity presents itself. So you didn't quit mentally. How what did you do to fuel yourself? Is just going out there before every practice and game is refocusing, thinking, I gotta get my mom and pops not working no more. I gotta pay their bills off. I wanna get them to where they don't have to work no more. I'm just thinking about that every day. Even with the our own students saying you come football is trash. So I just blocked that out. Keep my head down. And we just going to work. Is that some of the things they were saying about the program? Yeah, like it they was, took it as a joke. Yeah, I know some students to this day still joking about it. And they say it's a football uh, basketball school up there. That's why I had to get up out of there because I'm a football guy. He said, I like being around football things. Yeah, I feel it. You you feel like this ain't even a priority for y'all, and this is my life. Yeah, that's I, how it was. It's like going around that campus, like, oh, you're a football player. Around here, yo, you play football for Colorado? Yeah. You know Dion? <laughs> Sador? <laughs> for real. Like, that, what's some of the, what, that is funny. What's some of the questions you get the most? First off, being black in Colorado. Yeah. It's all big pause. It's all football related stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The look is like, okay, he plays sports, right? Mm-hmm. He's not here just to go to school. What are some of the, the the most random or funny questions you've got? Obviously the you know Coach Fran? Yeah. No, nah, one day I was at the dog park. I wasn't expecting to know nobody, nobody know me. One day this dude came up to me and he was like, Aren't you Yukari Walker? He, he said, Hey bro. <laughs> he said, Aren't you Yukari Walker? Why do you Walker? know that? And I was like, Yeah. Uh, where where you know that from? He was like, dude, I watch a lot of interviews from Denver for Colorado sports. I just want to shake your hand. That's and I, love. And I was like, what's up? We shook his hand. He took a picture. And then shoot. That was it. I feel like here you got to watch a lot of things that you do. You could have been at the dog park on the phone talking crazy. Yeah. Not even talking crazy, just talking how how everybody does. And I want I want to say this, too, about about players and people in general. When we say talking crazy or doing this and this, 
there's always sides that are all are only meant for people that really know you and can and um can discern the message and the delivery, right? Mm-hmm. Your car can tell me X, Y, and Z, and I can discern he's mad, but this is the message. Someone else could hear that message and say, "Oh, he's ignorant. What is he talking? He's talking crazy." Yeah, everybody has that, bro. If if y'all heard the stuff that I say off camera, y'all may be appalled. Mm-hmm. It's not to say I'm a bad person, but imagine if you were, you know, being recorded in those private moments with your husband or wife or your daughters or your son. Yeah, talking to them educating them reprimanding them or whatever you know everything isn't meant for everyone has that been an adjustment to you being more known here and they know off rip you might not even know if bro never came up to tell you you might have never known yeah now it's been a huge adjustment just knowing i'm at a bigger stage and knowing my name is really out there now because like coach prom said they need linemen and exactly what he did he brought in linemen that people that we're going to be a huge part of the season. So the people out in Denver, actually everywhere is going to look at the line. So it, it, it has been crazy just going everywhere, people asking for a picture or um, can you FaceTime Shador or something. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just crazy. Honestly, you know, do you, do you like that? Or, or is that something you shy away from? I feel like someone that you mentioned earlier, Travis, mm-hmm. obviously he loves to inspire, especially kids yeah. that – Y'all can be the best in the world. Yeah. Because I'm just like you, just a kid, mm-hmm. loves football, right? You, with all the attention, oh, also, but uh, he will say it even too. He's he's not going to go out looking for that. You feel me? That's just, that's just not more of his vibe. Like, he, he's, he, he's a person that wants to be around family, yeah. friends, obviously loved ones, and, and just chill and be himself and let his guard down, right? For you, have you embraced that, or or what's your take on the attention nah, for you personally? I definitely embraced it because I'm not gonna lie. Yesterday, I went, I was getting some dog food from a dog, and it was his uh, kid in there. He had a Colorado, um, Colorado uh, sports. It was a jacket, and he was doing like a little fundraiser. Like as soon as I hit the door, I looked at it, turned around, went to my car, probably got like thirty dollars and gave it to him. Mm-hmm. And he was like, do you want one? I was like, no, nah, you can keep it. I just want you to come to one of these home games for yeah. us. Yeah, but I embrace it. I, lo- I love being around the kids and just doing things for them. Like, we just had a um, special Olympics set we had to set up for them. And it, it was actually nice. It was a nice uh, event to go to. Yeah. Just to watch them do things that other people can't do. Yeah, I like that. I like that, how you embracing it. But even if you were electing to, you know what? It's cool, but it's not really for me. I would respect that, too, because it isn't for everybody. Mm-hmm. Just because someone is a fan of you doesn't mean you're entitled to always stop what you're doing. Yep. Maybe even interrupt what you're doing, postpone what you're doing, mm-hmm. things that pertain to your future and your livelihood and affects those you and others around you yep. just to interact with this person. But the fact that you do, I want to you know give you a shout out to that because... Mm-hmm. That shows grow too, you know. You could be like, you know, some. Uh, what, what did bro say, Marshawn? He said, "I'm just here so I don't get fun." Yeah. But you, you know, you're not doing that. You yeah. really interacting with the people. What about your peers? Do you have any classes on campus? Have you been able to actually live the college life? Uh, I mean, at UConn, yeah, but now I don't have. I don't got no classes online, so yeah, I haven't see, even been on, on some Hollywood stuff. Just, I haven't been on just campus. Just when I thought he was one of the good guys, y'all. <laughs> He's on the Hollywood stuff. I I am nah, planning I to go on campus. I got classes online though. too, and I I got classes online. And I live in a whole different other state, so that's even more. Don't, sick. don't you fly back like every two weeks? Yeah, or something? every couple of weeks to go yeah. to class. But that's not as sick because I don't live there. It's sick, y'all don't live there. They never see y'all. They gotta pay to see y'all. Y'all real life celebrities, bro. It's crazy. I think that I don't know, bro. I I, I never was. I I I wasn't friends with. I played basketball my whole life. I wasn't friends with any football players. I was in a fraternity. Yeah. Um, and actually, we had gotten into a fight with the football players like a couple years before I came there. So that was just like a rule that we don't mess with football players. Don't let them in the parties. Don't do anything like that. Mm-hmm. So now getting exposed to football players, I definitely think that there is a mystique, bro, like because 
you are viewed as like one one in a million, like yeah. just because of the where whether it be the physical attributes or whatever, people are looking at y'all as like a future, a future somebody, right? Mm-hmm. But now it's not even a future somebody. It's like you're somebody now, bro. Yeah, has that been kind of weird interacting with your peers and they kind of look at you a different way? Because you might not even notice it. We be in the facility so much and we're only around athletes. But everybody's not an athlete. Yeah. Everybody's not even in Greek life. Everybody's not even involved in anything on campus. Some people, you know, some people just go to class. Some people only have online class. Some people aren't involved in anything that you you would even come in contact with them with. So how, how has that been? Just still being a normal kid. Because how old are you? You're 21? 21, yeah. You're a 21-year-old 21, 21 kid. But... For some, you're already their idol. You're already their superstar. You're already a source of hope for them. It's it's crazy. It's just crazy getting a call back from home. My my uh, my little uh, cousin calling me. Hey, I see you on TikTok. Yeah, yeah I see you with uh, Uncle. He called him Uncle Dion. Yeah. I see you with Uncle Dion and and uh, Shador. Tell him I said what's up. I really want to come to spring game. It's just crazy how everybody can watch what we're doing. And then I go outside of that world, and they they there. Hey, can I get a picture? Hey, you play for Colorado? It's just everybody has an eye on you. This is crazy. So you feel like I know we have. There's a prime effect, but I think that there's a Colorado effect as well. Like mm-hmm. all you gotta do is even for these even for these like recruits, they come up here and do one photo shoot, and they follow a couple people, and then we all because we support them. It's like. Like I think Buck tweeted out the other day, all you got to do to boost your brand's uh, engagement is just mention us. But anything affiliated, especially if you're a player, all it takes is to put that out there. Now you have all this incoming love and incoming in, incoming positive energy. But mm-hmm. with that also comes the hate, yeah. the sneak dissing, et cetera. How have you been able to navigate through that and, and not let it slow you down, deter you? Mm-hmm. I look at the I look at that as like a, like a motivation, like coming into college, people was going like Kyler Murray. People say he was going to be too small, he can't see over the line. Like people said I was going to be too small, play at UConn. It was crazy of how they can, how it, how it be people that never played football says that about a football player, and it's like now I'm at a Big Twelve school about to compete for a championship. It's just crazy how that. Those words can turn it in my motivation to drive me to the next level. What do you say to people that that say you, we, and us are crazy for thinking, asserting, and knowing, and saying out loud that we are aiming and, and contending for a championship? I say anything's possible. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I tell, I look them right now. I say we's going, we gonna be in that playoff bracket regardless. We gonna get in that, and we win in the Big Twelve. Because I think to a lot of people, we sound crazy. You know, I, I like that it's coming from a player because if I say it, it's just, well, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not even on the team. It don't matter yeah. what you're talking about. Coaches can say it all day, and they just chalk it up to arrogance. Mm-hmm. Then when players say it, they chalk it up to ignorance. You don't know what you're going to face. Blah, blah, blah. Does that even matter, realistically? Nah, just block all that out. We just, nah, it don't matter at all. We block all that out and just keep going. For real. I think that, I think, this sounds weird, I think that they think um, we just hype ourselves up. like. But, we, but y'all actually believe that when you say that, right? Yeah, fact. Yeah, and I, I want to let that be known for y'all. It's not, it's not a, when you come here, you know you can't, you can't say, like, but, but the real truth, you got to say, it. no, mm. this is what he is thinking. He just said he was out of school and it, it didn't go how he wanted to. So why then would he come here, choose to come here, and then just lie about it if it wasn't what, what the situation that he wanted it to be? I promise you, my, my whole, our whole team, we got that same mentality. Big 12 and playoff bracket, we got that same mentality that we were going to win at. I promise you, the whole team got it. Is there anything that y'all are gonna, uh, anything y'all going to do uh, once y'all reach these goals as a unit to celebrate? I know. We always talk about we go to our little favorite spot in Boulder. We can't put that out there, but shout out, shout out to you. Yeah. You know, and y'all are known for doing the the luxury stuff. You feel me? Living luxury. Y'all just can't. Well, the bros came back from Miami. 
Me and him are taking our own trip, bro. You yeah. feel I me? Mean? We doing our own thing. But have y'all talked about anything like that? No, nah, we really haven't. We haven't mentioned anything. I know it's early, so don't get mad. Yeah, it's yeah, a question yeah. for me. Yeah, bro. Nah, it's it's kind of early, but we haven't uh, mentioned anything about that yet. But I'm pretty sure if we do, it's going to be something big. And it's going to blow the world. Yeah, it's going to be like, it's going to go viral. It's going to be like, yeah, gonna, Colorado players do this yep. after blah, blah, blah. It's going to be like, dang. Mm-hmm. How, how has that been seeing that literally everything you do, though? Everything y'all do. Jordan can go live. Right, you can go live right now. Yeah. Give it 30 minutes. There's going to be some post on Twitter mentioning you saying something. It's crazy because everybody's watching. So it's it's just like you're on TV every day. As soon as you go to the facility, you're on TV. It's just crazy because everybody's watching. Everybody is. Has that changed how you prepare and, and how you show up every day? Knowing that your actions are broadcast to hundreds of thousands and millions of people every single day. Yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely changed. Like my getting up in the morning is like, all right, we're going to go get this money. We're going to go work out. We're going to go do this on the field. It has changed because... UConn is like, we just finna lift. I'm finna go home after that. <laughs> no, nah, I'm staying an extra hour to talk to Bucky, Coach, Coach Phil, my teammates, anything. This is crazy. I'm glad you mentioned Coach. Uh, how is Coach Phil, in your opinion, what makes him a good coach, and what do you feel like he is able to bring to your game and collectively y'all's game that's going to get y'all to the, to the level that we want to be at? Coach Phil is an amazing coach for us. It's like, he he knows what it takes cuz mm-hmm. he's been in that position. I think he was like the highest paid tackle at one point, but one point but he knows what it takes to get to that next level and he coaches us like that. That's what I like about him and he just knows what it takes. And coach Gunner, coach Gunner, mm-hmm. he don't take no crap either. Yeah. Coach Gunner knows. That's my guy, coach G and Phil. So what are some of the things that he's harping on making sure you get that might not even be about football. Like I know for the receiver room, he's always talking about don't be a soft individual. Don't ma- yeah. and I forgot what that was, what that word stood for. But it's basically it was don't make excuses. Mm-hmm. You got to show up in life. I like how uh, uh, Coach J. Phil he always uh, he always talks about defeating yourself so that you can win. Yeah, he's, and that's actually stuck a lot in my head. Like, bro, I can't lie. When he said that, I was recording it and I was like, bro. Honestly, like that's that's one of the realest things I heard. Mm-hmm. to date because a lot of times you do have to you got to defeat whatever is holding you back like i remember our old oc and i got to give a shout out to him based on this comment that he said he said the magic that you're missing is in the work that you've been avoiding what are some of the tidbits like that that don't have to do with football that actually stuck out to you like you know what bro that actually helped me like you yeah. know this is going up on the fourth floor i walk past all the coaches Coach Sherman called me in there. Just asked me, am I good? How's the family? How's my pops and mom? It's just, he talks about life yeah. after football. Yeah. Like, he just makes sure I'm okay. I'm I'm not worried about football all the time, but he makes sure my life after football will be fine and set up in Coach Prom. Coach Prom in our um, leadership meetings, he talks about life after football, how to be a successful young man. Um, how to manage your money. It's just it's just the whole coaching staff knows what, what to do after football and know what to say about after football. I'm glad you mentioned the leadership meeting because that's something we're not privy to. So kind of explain to them, what is a, what is a leadership meeting? Obviously, you can't tell them who's in it. Yeah. But what's the, what's the premise of that? And like, why is he meeting with y'all specifically? Uh, it's like to make sure the team is okay. Um, we're still on track. Everybody going to class and all that. It's just how can we make the team better as as us as t- us teammates? How can we make them better, more leaders? Because you got people like uh, vocal leaders in there, leader by leading by examples, and people that just d- do everything right mm-hmm. on camera and off camera. You have those type of people in there. So we just talk to the coach problem about that every day. How can we make us better? So I feel like your experience with Colorado has, you already know. And how how can we get closer to God? That's oh, that, one that that's, was that should have been the first thing because that's what he harps on the most. That's really important. Mm-hmm. Has, has that been has that been touched on by multiple coaches other than Coach Prime? Yes, the whole coaching staff 
talks about God. But Coach Prime is the main main man to go to. He started us practice off with a prayer, team meeting with a prayer, maybe uh, even dinner with a prayer. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the guy to go to. Uh, while we are talking about Coach Prime, what was your first interaction with Coach Prime, and how how did that go? If you remember, did you have any preconceived notions that that you know going into it, he you know he's gonna be like this or? He might be like someone else that you've seen. How how was your interaction with him? Now on my official visit, I was just I got in the hotel. I just seen a picture of Coach Prime and like all the teams he played for, football and baseball. I'm like, dang, I'm really yeah. gonna meet this guy tomorrow. And were you scared, Loki, or no? You were just chilling. I was Loki nervous. Honest. I was yeah, nervous because yeah. I ain't, I ain't never met. You just a, didn't know how he's gonna be. Yeah, I ain't never met a person that did all those things, and I'm about to meet him. Yeah. Shake his hand. And it's like, he sat down in his office, talked to me and my pops and my uncle. At the end of the meeting, he asked me, so what you going to do, dog? <laughs> I said, coach, I'm, we coming. Yeah. We coming, coach. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling him no. So I already knew where I was going. Did you take a picture in front of the we coming or did you take a picture in front of the buffs? No, nah, we coming. I took a picture in front of that one. Did he tell you that when you got in there? No, he told he told me he said which one you want to choose. And I chose the right one. <laughs> yeah, they be saying that coach said that man. When y'all come in here, you, if you if we uh you might take a picture in front of that uh, Colorado Buffaloes. But when you yep. take a picture in front of that, we coming. Mm-hmm. And that's telling you something right there. Yeah. So you walked out of that building. How did you feel finally having that official visit, locking it in with Coach Prime in Colorado? How, how did you How did you feel, bro? Coming from a situation that you you weren't fulfilled at. I ain't gonna lie. As soon as I left, left that uh, facility, got in the car back to the airport, I felt like I was already a celebrity, cause I was committed. I was just so happy just to be there, and be a buff, talk to Coach Brown, talk to Shador, talk to the coaching staff. I seen Josh, and I was like, oh, this this home, really? Yeah. I'm about, we about to come here and ball out, but I felt amazing. I I didn't take the prime shades off the whole day. You had at the on? airport. Yeah. On the plane, I, I have had them on the whole day. Yeah. I like that. It was nice, man. So having that situation, knowing what you're coming into and then now being here, what are some of the things that has been most fun for you or or you gravitated the most toward or most enjoyable, whether it be on the field or off the field? I know you got a pup here. Yeah. Like it's like you you have a whole new life here. You feel yeah. me? How has been adjusting to Colorado been for you? Oh, it's been good. Like actually yesterday we just had this blizzard. Couple of teammates, crazy bro. Couple of teammates, crazy. we went outside and we were just throwing snowballs at each other, throwing other teammates' yeah, crib, I see running you in their crib. That was crazy. Yeah, it, He's nah, sick, it been, bro. It been, it been fun though. You've been, been in the mountains too. I know you've been yeah. in the mountains. Yeah. On my OV, we went in the mountains. I seen the whole boulder. It was, was that nice. crazy? Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Me and Josh, we were just sitting down talking. When we was just sitting down talking, we was getting like deep conversations. I was like, I know, I know, I'm gonna go here. Yeah, but. I already knew I was going to go here. I just had that feeling that it's going to be that school. Yeah. We're going to turn up. I like that, bro. You're one of the players that I always can talk to about anything. Uh, and, and I know I'll get some actual wisdom. A lot of these dudes, obviously not even a lot. All of them is younger than me, but I don't really view them as little bros because, I mean, you always can gain some knowledge from someone else's experience mm-hmm. and their outlook on things, especially because – they may have seen your situation from the outside and that can give you that that vantage point that you actually need to go to the next level. You feel me? Like, I can ask y'all, okay, what type of content should I... And it, y'all can actually give me a better answer than maybe asking someone else because y'all seen it from the outside. Yeah. And now y'all on the inside. You can say, hey, bro, you need to do this and this and this. So I want to thank you for jumping on the podcast with me, y'all. He going to be on so many other videos. I'm just trying to give y'all the introductory to just get to know some of these guys a little bit more in depth. And then as we go forward, we'll stop talking about the football and we'll just I'll just get on here and start instigating arguments so you could just see how people really think. Speaking and stuff like of that. instigating, what you want to do right now, <laughs> Coach Prom? I know you've been going against Travis in the fishing competition and stuff, but there's a new lineman in town and he from Texas. So whenever you go back to your crib, I'll be there waiting on you. Hey, you heard it. You heard it here first. Coach. Don't duck the smoke either. Yeah. You want to put something on it? Because he's going to say, I'm not doing it for nothing. We can talk about we that. We can talk about that me later. And, yeah, me and him can talk about that. But we, he, t- we, he, we already talked about going fishing back at home. Okay. But we're we going to see. 
I ain't got, hard to find. He ain't hard to find for real, Coach. That's funny. You used that on Coach the other yeah, day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coach had a backpack for your car. He bro didn't go get the backpack. Then he went up there. Coach is talking about how I got to find you to give you something. <laughs> he said, "You know, I ain't hard to find." Yeah, he's like, "That was a good. That was a good comeback." Anything else you want to plug? Tell the people anything you're interested about, any merch or anything you got going, so we can get you know them on in tune with what you have going on in life right now. Uh, I'm really good. I'm just on football in school, but my boy Khalil got some "Don't Touch Two merch coming out. Make yeah. sure y'all go that and go get Shador merch. Ooh. Y'all already know where that's at. Oh wait, this is the question they've been waiting for. Fifty fifty. How did this come <laughs> about, buddy? I'm not the uh, owner of fifty fifty. I just know how it came and how it's coming, but you got to ask Justin for that answer. I can't tell you the answer because he's the executive. I like how you did that. That's, you know what I'm saying? Now we got to get Justin on here. That's yep. something for y'all to watch, bro. Yeah. Thank y'all for tuning in. As always, we out. Yo.